I don't think people have any idea what's really happening in Gaza and why it is happening. A few weeks ago, right before this war in Gaza ignites, Netanyahu goes to the United Nations General Assembly and he holds up this map and declares his plan for a new Middle East. And people are going, what is this stupid line this guy's drawing with a red marker? What it is, is an economic corridor that stretches all the way from India to the United Arab Emirates, into Saudi Arabia, into Jordan, Israel, and then finally to the entire European continent. I mean, the United States at this point, seeing their influence starting to fade, seeing the relevance of the dollar uh, recede after they stole $300 billion from Russia. You have all these spooks in Washington and Tel Aviv, you know, running around desperately trying to counter BRICS and counter China's new Silk Road. And this is their answer. This is a rival to the new Silk Road. Remember, the ancient Silk Road is the largest, most important trade route in human history. This thing is enormous. It stretches all the way from China to Syria to the Mediterranean Sea. The Chinese know how important this thing is and they want to revive it. It is the future of world economics, trade and politics. Within the span of a few weeks, Iran and Iraq have signed a railway deal. So now you have a rail link for the new Silk Road. And President Assad of Syria, who the West have been trying to isolate for over a decade, is now visiting China, the world's largest economy, and signing a strategic partnership. This is pivotal. So now the new Silk Road has rail access all the way to the Mediterranean Sea through Syria's port in Latakia. So not just land, but maritime trade. This is crucial. And as enormous and important as all of this is, this is just one aspect. This is just one aspect. You still have the gas. How can we talk about the Middle East without talking about gas and oil? When the US instigated the Maidan coup in 2014, that wasn't just about NATO expansion and encirclement of Russia. This was about surrounding, controlling and cutting off Russian gas to Europe. Russia is the country with the largest proven reserves of natural gas. Control Ukraine and you control the pipelines that feed and supply Russian gas to Europe. For decades, you've had US politicians, Republican and Democrat from every administration, openly saying on camera, we don't want Nord Stream. There will be, uh, we, there will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. You want to have pipelines that don't go through Ukraine and Russia. Uh, for years, we've tried to get the Europeans to be interested in different pipeline routes. It's time to do that. You want to depend more on the North American energy platform, the tremendous bounty of oil and gas that we're finding in North America. Lo and behold, Nord Stream 1 and 2 are blown up. I mean, this is without question the most egregious, the largest terrorist attack on European infrastructure in modern history. There are only three countries on this planet that can pull this off. They are Russia, Britain, and the United States. And let me tell you, it was not Russia. You combine that with the sanction packages from the European Union, banning Russian oil and gas. I mean, talk about shooting yourself in the foot. So now there's no more Russian gas coming into Europe. And just like that, the United States have achieved a long-standing foreign policy objective. Now, the only other country with enormous gas reserves, the second largest in the world, is Iran. Iran signed the nuclear deal in 2015 and 2016. They're complying in every way imaginable. The IAEA at the UN cannot be happier. And then the United States, you know, the guys who orchestrated the whole deal, go back on their word and they rip it up just like that and reimpose sanctions on Iran. So now Iran is barred from selling its oil and gas to Europe and others. So Russia and Iran, the two countries with the largest gas reserves are out of the picture. Then Israel, all of a sudden, propose themselves as a solution to the European Union's gas shortages. Take our trilateral energy, for example, that we closed in June with Egypt and Israel. It has played an important role in our strategy to get rid of the Russian fossil fuels. How convenient. How convenient. In 2010, they conduct a geological survey and find this monstrous giant gas field in the Middle East. It's called the Leviathan, and it's in the Mediterranean Sea on the Levantine Basin. That means it's right off the coast of Palestine, Lebanon, Syria. Syria initially declines offers over its gas reserves and simultaneously refuses to lay pipes for a Qatari gas project. What a coincidence. Barely a year later, war breaks out in Syria. And who's funding it? 
Qatar and Israel and the United States are just some of the parties funding and running this war to overthrow the government in Damascus. Today, the United States control one third of Syria. They control all of Syria's oil fields and Israel is bombing Syria's most vital port, Latakia, on a regular basis. So they're cutting off all the oil revenue and destroying, crippling any maritime activity, such as trade, such as gas exploration. Another major port on the Levantine coast is in Beirut, which mysteriously explodes in 2020. And so Israel, proposing itself as a solution to Europe's gas shortages, shows up with an FPSO, this enormous gas extraction vessel, and tries sealing gas from Lebanon's Karish gas field. And, you know, this reignites a huge maritime border dispute. And Israel has to go and beg the United States to solve this diplomatically because Hezbollah said, if you steal one cubic inch of our gas, we will fire our missiles on your ship. Now we come to Gaza. Gaza also has its own unexplored gas field. Gaza is also a concentration camp run by the Israelis. And it's been under siege by Egypt and Israel under naval blockade since 2007. I mean, you can't even fish properly, let alone extract gas. And so now the Lebanese, the Syrian, the Palestinian ports, they're all out of action. And the only working port left in the coast is the Israeli port on Haifa. I mean, how convenient. This makes Israel the only one able to explore gas and implement an economic corridor like the one that Netanyahu held up at the UN. So in other words, Israel and the United States together killed off all the competition, stole their goods and cornered the market. But as winter is approaching, Israel desperately need to get that gas for Europe. But there's no stability. There can never be stability in the region without solving the Palestinian question. And so when Netanyahu shows up at the UN with his brilliant plan, you know, the Israelis thought, oh, it's a done deal. You know, they'll just get Saudi Arabia to normalize ties and thereby extinguish the Palestinian issue once and for all. And that is precisely why they are in Gaza slaughtering Palestinians like crazy, like they're in berserker mode. You know, Israel has bombed Gaza before, but this surpasses anything we've ever seen, which is truly saying something. I mean, this is unhinged, you know, calling people human animals and massacring them. Israel is just hoping the Palestinians will run away in fear into the desert. They've literally said this. They want to put them in the desert. They want people in Gaza to go to the Sinai Desert and push the people in the West Bank into Jordan. This is genocide and ethnic cleansing without question. But it also has economic and geopolitical implications. Hamas and the collective resistance, when they found out about Israel's plan and Saudi Arabia's wishes to normalize ties with Israel, which would destroy any hope of a Palestinian state, I mean, this forced their hand. It became clear they needed to act and respond immediately, lest Palestine be lost forever. For Palestinians, this is and always has been a matter of life and death, to be or not to be. Either the resistance axis and the global south expel the American and Israeli colonizers from the Middle East, or Israel and the United States will continue occupying the region, choking off the new Silk Road, plundering Syria's oil, and keeping Russian, Iranian, and Arab gas cut off from the world market. This is a decisive moment, and not just for Palestine, because the victors will end up drawing the new map of the world to come.